Greek mythology talks about it. Enuma Elish talks about it. The Sumerian texts talk about it. Scientists talk about it. Channeled entities talk about it. And remote viewers have visited it. What are we referring to? We are referring to the war of the titans slash the war in heaven and the destruction of the planet Tiamat which probably occurred hundreds of thousands of years ago. I wrote quite extensively about it in the West Penry paper, WPP, so we won't get into too much details here. What we really want to discuss are the consequences of the explosion on Tiamat and how we can still clearly see the effects today here on Earth. The evidence is all around us, but we are so used to seeing it that we don't pay attention. Life in this solar system started on Tiamat, which is now the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Tiamat was a gigantic water planet, perhaps the size of Jupiter, and this was the cradle of humankind millions of years ago. In the WPP, I call this androgynous human species Namlu'u, and I wrote that they were taller than we are, and they were black-skinned. How tall is taller? We would say much taller. Everything was gigantic on that ancient planet, and the environment we experience here on Earth is like a miniature landscape in comparison. I wrote about in the WPP that the Lake Baikal area was the real Garden of Eden here on Earth, but the real Garden of Eden slash Eden was on uh, Tiamat, where it all started. The Garden of Eden on Earth was only Enki's mimicry of the real thing, Enki's copy. After Marduk destroyed Tiamat and the war was over, Enki and his team started terraform Earth and put her in the orbit they wanted her to be in. This took a long time from our perspective, and he used much of the flora and fauna from Tiamat and rescaled it. So also the humans. As I argued in the WPP, the first Homo sapiens here on Earth were black, just like we were on Tiamat, in the image of their creator Enki, or should we call him Replicator, who is black as well. Because Earth was a part of Tiamat. Ia in Earth stands for Ia, Enki. One can safely assume that this chunk of rock that became Earth was inhabited when Tiamat was intact. So what happened to all the fauna and flora that must have existed all over our current planet in gigantic format when the planet dis uh, exploded? Did everything just dissipate? No. The explosion happened very suddenly and it was extremely powerful. Therefore, all life on the planet became petrified and turned to rock. This literally means that if an animal was drinking from a lake or in the middle of running or walking, they became petrified more or less in a mo moment and turned to stone, similar to the trolls in J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit. If this is what happened, we should be able to see a lot of petrified trees, plants and creatures around us, even humans. However, there are no such things, or are there? The problem why we can't see any of this is because we don't pay attention. We humans, Homo sapiens sapiens, are so used to our environment that we don't know what we're looking at. This world is filled with petrifactions. I suggest you look at the links in the description box beneath this video, where pictures, videos and other references are listed. How many times have you been out in nature and looked at big rocks, small rocks and even mountains that look like faces, entire animals, trees, stumps, mushrooms or whatever it can be? We usually br brush them off as random creations by weather and wind over time, but are they? 
Yes, some of them are, but many of them might not be. Not too long ago, I drove through Utah and Wyoming, and that was an interesting trip in many ways. I knew about petrifaction since before, and once you've realized what you see, you can't have it unseen. It becomes obvious what it is. In Utah and Wyoming, there are a lot of odd-shaped hills and mountains, extremely beautiful. As I was looking out the car windows, I saw amazing things. I saw entire mountains shaped as huge giants lying on their backs or on their side. It was all there, heads with big eyes, noses and mouths attached to bodies lying down in death and petrified. Like I said, once you started to notice these things around you, you can never again pretend they are not there. It becomes obvious. I didn't see only one or two of these giants, I saw hundreds. It was like a gigantic graveyard. Then I looked at all the cars on the interstate with people in them who had no idea what they were surrounded by. Some of the smaller hills and mountains also had a shape of petrified plants and stumps. When we look at mountain ranges, like those we see in Utah and Wyoming, they are not extremely high, but instead they stretch horizontally, end abruptly and start over again, often looking like giants at rest or in death. If we were able to raise one of these mountain ranges up vertically, it would sometimes reach uh, perhaps a few miles up into the air. How is it possible for a being to be that tall? Well, it's not. Not here on Earth, which is a much smaller planet that wouldn't be able to host huge beings like that. But what about a planet the size of Jupiter? Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. When we talk about giants here on Earth, we often depict them as beings everything from 8 feet to perhaps 30 feet tall. And we think that's unbelievably tall. Compared to the giants of Tiamat, they are like grasshoppers. Most of the petrified mountains I saw had a humanoid shape, but not all of them. Embedded in the mountain ranges were also creatures I have never seen before, which is what could be expected. Not all creatures from Tiamat were recreated here in smaller size. There are many videos on YouTube about petrifaction, but obviously not all of them are genuine. However, many of them are, in our opinion. Search for it on YouTube, and I'm sure you'll find some very interesting ones. There is particularly one video that shows something people think is just an odd-shaped mountain, but it doesn't require a big stretch of one's imagination to see that this mountain is actually a huge petrified tree stump. See description box. It requires much more imagination to say that it's not. The planet is full of such petrified stumps. Apparently, when the overlords terraformed Earth, they might have had to cut down some of the large trees that were still more or less intact but petrified. A number of these stumps could also be what remained after the explosion, and the rest of the trees are floating around in the asteroid belt. Moreover, there are also huge rocks that look like giant mushrooms. I actually saw a video with an entire forest of them, where the mushrooms were perhaps four to five times the size of hum uh, more than human. I have also seen videos of strange creatures standing like big rocks in otherwise empty fields. If I can't find these videos now, I'll add them later. They are out there, and they are not fake. One of the creatures looked exactly like the reptilian Sumerian reli relic uh, that Anton Parks and I both used as fairly authentic Orion beings. Many observant researchers have pointed out the petrifactions, but they usually think they are pre-flood giants who lived here on Earth. Not so. 
that would be impossible. Some of the smaller versions might, but the really giant ones can't be anything except remains from Tiamat. There are similar photos of petrifactions on Mars as well. You can google it. The bottom line is that this world is full of petrifactions when we know what we are looking for. Please make comments below if you have observed this phenomenon as well.